It's mid-October and fall has officially arrived in East Lansing. As alumni return to watch their Spartans compete, the excitement of homecoming is in the air. The tradition of homecoming is fun, but the tradition of playing alongside your brothers, that is something special. Life is full of choices. Sometimes these choices are difficult and other times not so much. Sometimes these choices come down to one thing. And for Brian Allen, that one thing made all the difference. I was definitely ready for a new challenge, you know, after my senior year of high school. Like most seniors, you know, you're ready to move on, ready to, you know, get to bigger and better things. And you know, this was just the next step. Me and my older brother were never on the same football team, you know, throughout, you know, middle school, high school, none of that. The only, only thing we ever really were on together was a wrestling team. Really in my recruiting process, you know, I, you know, I liked a bunch of schools and, you know, I thought I was going to go to a bunch of different schools, but at the end of the day, what really, what really mattered to me was just having the opportunity to play with my older brother and no other school other than Michigan State could offer me that. So, you know, I just wanted to play with him and, and join him here and, you know, have him as a mentor and someone I could look up to and I think that really helped me out. I think he always looked up to his older brother and he looked at a lot of schools and we weren't sure what he was going to pick. In the end, he said that every place that he looked at, he always compared to Michigan State, nothing really measured up. When we found out he was coming here, I didn't want to persuade him, but I was ecstatic that he chose Michigan State. It's been um, much easier having all three boys at the same school, and I think it's fit the three of them very well. You know, my older brother was at Michigan State since 2012, so I've always followed the Spartans and you know, just watching, you know, teams like the Rose Bowl, you know, I looked up to those guys and you know, finally be able to be here and to be able to play with some guys who, you know, you know I thought were heroes in high school is, is pretty special, you know, to be to be on the field going against guys like Chili Calhoun and, you know, people like Marcus Rush who you looked up to, you know, all throughout high school. So it was a pretty special moment just to finally get here and to be able to be teammates with them. As far as, you know, having my older brother here, you know, I wouldn't say it was exactly the kind of help that everyone would think. It was more of a, a tough love that, you know, just having him here, you know, if ever I, you know, whenever I screwed up, he was there to you know, kind of yell at me or, you know, get in my ear just to let me know I need to be better. It was good just having him here to, to be able to tell me how it is and you know, not soft coat it in any way. So, you know, I knew what I had to do to get better. That tough love worked. As a true freshman, Brian became a fixture on the offensive line with his brother, Jack. During their two seasons together, the Spartans racked up 23 victories and won a Big Ten championship. Well, Travis Jackson, my brother, Jack Conklin, those are guys you know, who I really admired growing up and the guys who I really respected. So just having the opportunity to play next to them was something that meant a lot to me. And you know, just being able to be a part of some, some big moments in that 2014 season was, was pretty special. It's the first time they got to play together was here at Michigan State, so it was pretty cool to see them out there together and see them win together and celebrate together, and it's a pretty neat experience. I've always been a real competitive person, and that's the environment that was, that was here when I got here. Just you know, a bunch of guys that you know, were really a family that you know, wanted to work as hard as they could and work together to you know, achieve a common goal, and that was just special to be a part of and you know, special to be able to contribute you know, early on with those guys. Following the 2015 season, Jack graduated and went on to play for the New Orleans Saints, while Brian found himself in an all too familiar position. You know, it was actually the same thing in high school. So, you know, Jack graduated and came here, and then my sophomore year I was, you know, alone at our high school because Matt was in eighth grade then, so I had a little bit of, you know, awkwardness. I was there alone. I really didn't, just an awkward time, you know, in my life being there without a brother, and then, you know, Matt came in. So, you know, it's similar to how that was then, and. Now the, the roles kind of switched. You know, I'm the older brother now, and Matt's the younger brother. Jack taught me a good way to, you know, help out your younger brother and you know, really show him the way. So, you know, like Jack, you know, I try to stay on Matt and you know, be in his ear. You know, what he needs to do, what he needs to do to get better. And you know, if he has questions, he knows he can come to me. So, you know, really, I just you know had a great example with Jack. You know, helping me out. So, you know, I try to do the same for Matt. The biggest thing was I think I felt a lot more comfortable like being able to come up here and just like knowing that Brian was here for me and 
whatever I needed, he would be there for me just like he is at home. Whether it was the times with the lifts and stuff like that and getting to class and technique and things like that and literally just spending time at his place when I didn't want to stay in the case hall dorm rooms and stuff like that. So he's just been a huge help all around ever since he's been here. Just kind of cool to have your brother come over. You know, not many people have that opportunity just to you know, watch sports, go out to eat, stuff like that. So you know, it's something that, you know, you don't really think about now, but it's pretty, pretty special just to, to have the opportunity to, you know, to be able to hang out with him all the time. Watching Jack be the leader of Brian then transitioning that with Brian now being a leader for Matt. It is, it's what football should be. It's what family should be. And to have those Allens and to have the trust that all three have given me, that mom and dad have given me, it's been a blessing. Sometimes John would agree with me, a curse. Brian has matured here due to Coach D'Antonio, Coach Manny, Coach Staten, a lot of his attitudes have changed. He looks out for Matt, but he looks out for a lot of the other young guys on the team also, and I think he has accepted the responsibility and tried to do the best he can with it. Although Brian is currently a team captain and considered one of the best centers in the nation, being a team leader did not come easy. Come to what you want. Come. Even with the knowledge he gained from his older brother, Brian had to find his own way to lead the Spartans. In the time in East Lansing, I've done a lot of maturing. You know, you come here as a little kid and kind of think you have all the answers. And I've really, you know, become more coachable, I think, and really been able to, you know, kind of just become a better player because of that, because I've been more mature. And, you know, I've been, in, been able to help other guys around me. And, you know, early on, I would say, I was more focused on myself. And now it's more of a, you know, a team goal in the back of my mind and just, you know, just trying to help the guys around me. Brian Allen has turned into a terrific leader. It wasn't easy for him. At times, last year, the year before, as he tried to lead, he'd mess up. And instead of getting after him and screaming and yelling at him, I'd say, hey, maybe we should try this. And he'd, he'd agree, you know, after the, it calmed down or whatever, he'd say, yeah, you're probably right. I need to handle that one different. He's tough, he's rugged. All he wants to do is win. He just wants to win and he wants to be a part of that victory. And that's what drives him. He's playing at a level right now higher than even his brother Jack was playing at. I want to match, you know, if not exceed, you know, what my older brother did. And you know, I think he has the same expectations for me. So, you know, he set a great example of, you know, how to play the game and you know, how to be a player here. And, you know, he has you know, all the accolades in the world. And, you know, that's just something I'm chasing, trying to, you know, accomplish and level up with him really. And, I wouldn't say it's a competitive thing as far as, you know, you want to be better than him, but it's just, you know, I have so much respect for him. I want to be, you know, like him. At 165 yards, a new career high for L.J. Scott. Did you see 65 Brian Allen the scene? That was a thing of beauty, him pulling out there leading that play. I really wanted to just have our team get back to, you know, the winning, the winning mentality and having that, you know, hard edge, you know, tough body mentality that the Spartans have had in the past. And, you know, we had our... You know, our problems in 2016, but you know, I think this year we're doing a really good job of coming together as a team and, you know, playing for each other, you know, playing, you know, the full four quarters and just having fun, really. So, you know, those things, you know, really, you know, elevate you as an individual, you know, when it's fun and guys are competing and guys are, you know, a family. It's nice to see Brian step up and, you know, really want his brother to succeed and really care, you know, that his brother does well here. and. Um, also to see Brian step up and be a leader on the team. I think it took Brian a little longer to figure things out. So it's nice to see him help his brother and help others. Coach D says it all the time, you know, complete your circles. It, it kinda kinda feels like, you know, they're getting completed. You know, our our parents get to watch us grow up and live out our dreams and I'm just, you know, real thankful for, you know, the people who I've had in my life and you know them especially helping me get to this point and helping my brothers get to the point they're at in their lives. Growing up, you know, sports has really been, you know, my whole life, the whole everything. You know, it's always been about wrestling. It's always been about football. And whatever season I've been in, it's, it's only been about that and the guys who I'm doing it with. So not even doing it with my brothers, but these are the guys who, you know, I'm around every single day and guys who I live with, guys who I eat with, guys who, you know, I do everything with. So you know, they really are family. You know, this, this team is a family. Everyone hangs out. Everyone's you know, just so welcoming. And, you know, it's just great to have, you know, guys like that and a support system like this just to be with you and you know help you through the tough times. So 
You know, it really is, you know, awesome just having, you know, the teammates I've had here and, you know, the type of people I've had, you know, impact my life here. On September 28th, 2017, former Spartan fullback Bob Apiza was inducted into the Michigan State Athletics Hall of Fame. It was a journey that started 65 years ago and covered more than 6,600 miles. 1952, I came up from American Samoa and I lived under a kerosene lantern all my life. I've never seen electricity. And as a young man, stood on that balcony of that ship. And I told my brother George, there must be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kerosene lanterns at Honolulu Harbor. And he told me, no, that's electricity. Growing up in Honolulu, Hawaii, Bob Apiza made a name for himself in football and attracted attention from around the country. When the time came for a decision, he knew what he wanted. I wanted to play in the, the granddaddy of all bowls, that's the, the uh, Rose Bowl. But I wanted to play for the toughest conference, that was the Big Ten. Michigan State football was legendary during the 1965 and 1966 seasons, producing 19 wins one loss and one tie, while claiming two Big Ten titles and two national titles under head coach Duffy Daugherty. Duffy, he's a magician. He takes the people he, he likes. He'll put them in places. He's like a jigsaw master. And he'll put them into it. He finally finds the right combination. And that's how we became Big Ten and national championship for two years in a row. Apiza was an integral part of those championships and closed out his career as MSU's most prolific rushing fullback with 1,343 yards and 19 touchdowns. I ran hard. I, I, I punished um, linebackers. Uh, if I got to the secondary, I knew uh, I did my job as a runner. Um, it was a breeze for me to run away from the uh, defensive back. Never in my wildest dream would I expect that I'm at the podium to enter the, the Hall of Fame. Um, those are greats. The Johnny Pingles, the Madge Johnson, the Bubba Smiths, and so forth and so forth down the line. I want you to know in years to come, your pictures, your legacy, your family, and your story will be read by future generations to come. Of the history of Michigan State, 139 people have been inducted, men and women. 139 people have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. I'm number 140. Uh, it's a great honor for me, uh, but I think about my teammates. Go Green. Congratulations. I've gotten to know Baba Pisa over the last 11 years, and. Uh, Tremendous representative for Spartan football and Spartan athletics in general. Um, he's a deeply passionate man. Uh, he's a guy that cares deeply about Michigan State uh, and, his, and his fellow teammates. He's a very humble person. Um, and he's always a guy that's giving. He's always giving. Every time I've ever met him, he's, he's giving. He's giving uh, of his time and just, um, just a great person. Captains today, Chris Fry, Brian Allen, Kari Willis, Brian Lewerke, and they're joined by former Spartan football legend and new MSU Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Bob Pisa. Not only has Bob Pisa impacted Michigan State, but also changed the landscape for the game of football across the country. When I grew up, everybody knew Bob Pisa was. He went to Michigan State. I think he was the first uh, Samoan All-American. And so, you know, as a young guy growing up, everybody knew about him. He was kind of a guy that everybody aspired to be like, you know, went to the mainland, uh, went to a Big Ten school and did really well. But he's a guy that you try to be like, you know, a guy that uh, football was a vehicle for him to better his life. But he also lived his life in a great way. He's just, you know, a great role model and example for a lot of us and me included. I, I remember Ken New Montalolo, Junior Seau. Uh, Troy Polamalu. Troy came up to me and says, it's such an honor to meet you because I started that trend a long time ago. Knowing that, I'm never abusive of that. 
I accept it as a credit to my people, but when I talk about my people, I'm talking about the Spartan people. I'm talking about everybody, all my teammates, and that's very important for me. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy homecoming. It's homecoming number 102 here at MSU. A lot of eyeballs on this young team. They want to get a W in front of them, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. It's a festive atmosphere anytime it's homecoming. Michigan State 3-0 in conference play, Indiana 0-3, and, and yet I think we all feel like this is an evenly matched game. You'd be amazed looking at the personnel, just how similar they are. The main difference is that over the course of 11 years under Mark D'Antonio, Michigan State has created a winning culture. This beautiful day. Here we go. Play fake by Ramsey. Nowhere to throw it under pressure, and he'll be sacked. Fourth down, Indiana will pump the ball away. Brown Lewerke with Madre to his left, a late handoff to Madre. Hit at the line of scrimmage, the ball is loose. And recovered by Indiana. Now the field position is flipped. The Hoosiers get it inside the red zone. After the quick change, the Spartans make one big play. Snap to Ramsey, he'll run again. Going to be thrown down by big Mike Ponishuk. This kick is up and it is good. That is such a great job from this Michigan State defense. Indiana gets the ball deep in Spartan territory. They have three plays. They gain zero yards. At the end of one on homecoming afternoon at MSU, it's Indiana three, Michigan State nothing. Michigan State offensively needs to get into a rhythm here. Just seem to not play their ball game so far. Here's the snap, here's the pressure. Back he goes to the five, rolls to his left to the 10. He's at the 15, he's back to the 20, and down he goes right there. Great job there! Great job! Stewart in motion, right to left. Play fake by Lewerke, rolls to his left, throws on the run. Grab by Stewart on a jump catch at the 30. Lewerke has LJ to his left, shotgun snap. Throws it left side for LJ, Perfect. blockers in front. He's at the 15, he's at the 10. 23 yard try, that's all for Matt Coglin. Here's the snap and the put down. The kick is perfect. Six and 46 to play here in the first half. Michigan State three, Indiana three. Ramsey fakes the handoff, throws right side to Timian. Wow. One blocker in front, but that's not enough. Andrew Dowell blows through. Credit. Michigan State for their defensive effort. It's kind of a tug of war, an old school slugfest that you come to love here in the Big Ten. Indiana will run to the locker room. Time has run out. Our halftime score, the Spartans three, Indiana three. High game as we get the third quarter going. Hands to Ellison. Ellison hitting the backfield and slapped down back near the 10 yard line. And this defense has done their job all day. Spartans fighting to move this pigskin against a very stubborn Indiana defense. Defense got to get that intensity back up as they ended the half with. Ramsey back to throw, throws it right side. Simi Cobbs with a catch, but the Spartans are all over him. The kick from the right hash mark is on the way, and it's good. That'll make you swallow hard if you're a Spartan fan. With 5.31 to go in the third quarter, that field goal puts a little extra pressure on the Spartans offense, which just has not done much. And so far, the Indiana Hoosiers have put up a great fight. Indiana leads after three, the Hoosiers six, the Spartans three, still three wideouts. Hand off again to Ellison, he's gonna be stopped. And Indiana pads the lead, their third field goal. This game's gonna come down to us. It's gonna come down to us, and they gonna quit, not us. Ramsey dumps it short, and that tackle a big one. Indiana's going to have to punt from near their goal line. Lewerke under center. Double reverse to Cody White running left. Flips it to there Felton Davis running to his right. He's at the 20. He's at the 15-yard line. Shotgun snap. One on one. He's got Lewerke him. throws left side for Felton He's Davis. Makes the grab in the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Lewerke takes a shotgun snap, rolls to his right, throws. Caught yeah. by Cody White. Cody at the 35, the 30, 
He's at the 25. He's inside the 20 yard line. Let's go! Hand off to LJ Scott, runs to his right. He's at the 10, he's at the The five. Heads for the right pylon. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Hey, we'll take that all day. Let's finish this off. Ramsey takes the shotgun snap. Ramsey under siege. His pass is incomplete. And that's going to do it. 4 0 in Big Ten play. 6 1 overall. Michigan State got tested big time by Tom Allen and Indiana. But in the end, Mark D'Antonio's team just a little bit better. You know, you go into this game and it's not going the way that you plan. And defense has just got to step up and make big plays, and that's what we did. It's just like every other week we go into this like a 12 round battle, like a 12 round fight. It took 14 today, and we came out on top. We're just going to keep fighting. You know, at the end of the game, he just came down. I thought it just came down to our grit, really. Like I said to our football team, you know, we just, just kept playing. And uh, keep playing, good things can happen. But offense moved the ball, got some big catches from, from Cody White, huge catches by him, and Hunter Rison, big catches on that last, next, on their last, our offense's last drive. I thought we just kept playing. You know, I, you know it wasn't pretty, but we just kept playing.